Hello and welcome to Ellen Ruth Soap. I'm Ellen and today I am making a soap with the men in mind. Uh, it's been a while since I made a really masculine soap. So for the fragrance that I'm using today, it's called Spiced Mahogany from Be Scented and this is fantastic. I tend to love masculine scents. This one hits it. It's just warm and musky and masculine. Um, so I think it's fantastic. So for the colors, this says it does discolor to brown. So I will leave one portion uncolored a little bit, maybe add some TD to, you know, have some swirl in there with the brown or the other side. What am I trying to say? With the part that's going to discolor with the fragrance, that's what I'm trying to say. I will go ahead and add some chocolate brown mica in there. It's really nice dark. I was thinking mahogany wood is kind of dark and rich color. So we'll just let the fragrance kind of do its thing with this to help it. Um, and with the uncolored portion, I might try a little of this uh, fire cider just because I thought it went really pretty. Now with the discoloration, I don't know if this is going to pop out much or not, but we might throw it in there and give it a try just for some interest. Um, just make this really wonderful. I think I will try to do a, um, if this fragrance is behaving well, it says it doesn't cause acceleration. So if it's behaving well, I will like to do like a wood grain pour. We'll see how that goes. Um, I'm not doing multiple colors and it, and it does discolor, so not a true wood grain pour, but maybe just stripey. I don't know. Let's see when we get there and see how this fragrance is behaving. I've never used it before, but it smells great and uh, they said it didn't cause acceleration. So let's give it a try and see. I will be using goat milk and oil method today and uh, that's it. Let's get this pulled together and make a really wonderful masculine bar of soap. So it's time to add the additives into my soap oils and butters that are all blended together here. Um, and I have my fragrance off to the side. Oh my word, this smells really good. It's so masculine, but it's right up my alley. Um, I made one little change to the portion that I'm going to color with the chocolate brown mica. I'm also going to add a little walnut hull powder because the color is just perfect. And I want it to, you know, it, it'll leave like little speckles, almost like a wood grain feel because I'm going to try and do like a faux wood grain pour if I can, if this is behaving. So that's another addition that I forgot to mention in the intro. Anyway, let me quit talking and start adding my additives. Here is my wonderful Farm Fresh goat milk that I have discounted this liquid volume from the lye solution. Um, and also, I'll talk about the lye solution when I get there, but I did put some titanium dioxide in there just to keep everything lighter because uh, this wonderful fragrance does discolor but that's just part of the fragrance. You know, sometimes it's just worth it to work with those fragrances that discolor because they smell so good. <laughs> All right, let me get this blended in, wait for my lye to finish cooling, and we'll get to making this soap. All right, I'm ready to add the lye mixture here, which does have about a half a teaspoon of titanium dioxide. Um, it has cane sugar, it has silk fibers, and sodium lactate. That's what's going on in yonder. And we will get this up to a light trace, or emulsified, and then we'll split off for our colors and add the fragrance after that. And hopefully I can get a decent little wood grain pour down or something similar to it. It's not going to be a super traditional one. You need several colors to get a really nice wood grain, and I'm only doing, you know, three colors. But I think the idea will come across. I just want this to be really masculine and wonderful. So going to pulse a little and stir until we get emulsion. So after I get the colors all blended, I will pour into an empty um, pot. I'll show you when we get there, um, just to kind of layer it all up before I start pouring into the mold.
right, it's the next day and I, I'm very anxious to get in here because uh, I obviously mixed that fire cider red, that sort of um, beigey red color there, longer than the other two because it thickened up way faster than the others. So I don't think I got the mock wood grain pour that I was hoping for. It got a little bloppy, but I think that's really rustic. I came in this morning and steamed. This is just, it smells great. So I'm hoping that it's kind of cool anyway, but yeah, that's, <laughs> it had a potential to be really cool, but then that um, reddish color went fast and I'm like, oh my word, I guess I just probably wasn't paying attention and I probably stick blended it just a little longer than the others. And that, uh, that's on me. But let's see how that uh, swirl came out on the inside. Well, not really a swirl, kind of stripey. I'm hoping for stripes or something, something masculine, something wood looking. Ooh, the sides are looking cool. That keeps me hopeful. Loving the colors here, look at this end. That's kind of what I was hoping for, but I have a feeling it's not gonna be like that on the inside. But there's only one way to find out, and let's get in here. It's time to cut on my lovely multi-bar cutter. But first, can we just talk about the inside? That's cool. Now you can see the red there got kind of blobby. It's more of like an adobe orange almost, or a red brick, but I'm loving it. These smell fantastic. Can't wait to get to the bars here. Um, sometimes, you know, mistakes can be happy mistakes. So. I guess my caution is to uh, pay attention when, <laughs> when I'm stick blending to not over blend. I get kind of distracted and I'll blend some more than others and it's a cautionary tale. All right. Oh, that's cool. All right. So it's a little bit like I was wanting the little stripes, but then that's more what I was thinking I was going to get. But these are still really cool. I think these are very masculine, which was definitely what I wanted to go for. Oh, that's cool. The colors really work for me. And the top's really rustic, so very random, but cool. The sides are nice, too. I love soap sides. I pretty much love everything about soap, right? You all know that about me. There, isn't that cool, the sides? And then we'll open it up. Oh, here, I wonder if this is an odd swirl to do this in, but let's try. There, that's cool. Yep, these are definitely bring out spiced mahogany groove to me. And you can see just a little bit of the speckles from the black walnut hull powder. Um, barely can see it in the soap, but it's just a nice, I think it just adds a little texture, just another dimension to the bars, which I love. All right, let's flip this one and see if we got a pattern in here too. Ooh. Wow, that looks like a little, I don't know, devil head or something. <laughs> Interesting. It's like, um, oh, who is that bad guy uh, that Gandalf was standing on the bridge and he's like, none shall pass. And he kind of looks like that guy. <laughs> I know, I, I should remember who that is, and I can't. You all know who I'm talking about, I bet. 